Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. All right, this has been yet another episode of Star Talk. Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. Good show. Good show. And you back on your phone again? Yeah. It's, it's like... What is and what is so funny? What are you looking at? What? Okay, well, you got to show me what's all going right, on. Okay, okay. TikTok has a new feed uh-huh. that focuses on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Very cool. And Star Talk is part of that feed. Even more cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, check this Can out. You show me? These are people all around the world who post things that are sort of related to science, technology, engineering, and math. Check that out. Have a friend hold a cane out horizontally for you, or another similar object. And putting your two index fingers together, try to place them underneath the center of mass. When they let go, you will find it doesn't normally work. But, now try putting each index finger at opposite ends of the cane, and then moving your index fingers in towards the middle. It works every time. What you will find is that they always end up right under the center of mass of the cane. You can try starting off asymmetrically, and they will still end up under the center of mass. How does that work? So with the cane, what's interesting, or right. any stick, right. any horizontal, I used to do it with uh, yardsticks. Mm -hmm. um, so you can start at any two points, as long as each finger starts out on either side of what would become the center of mass. Okay. But they don't have to be equally separated. Right. This finger could be one inch from the center of mass and this could be seven inches, 10 inches, whatever. And as you start pulling it in, this finger just stays there until they're both equidistant and then they move simultaneously together. When you do this, there's more weight, weight on this on that finger one. than on that finger. Right. There's more friction and this stays put until this catches up. Right. It's a brilliant, brilliant demonstration. I love there. it. Saturn got a what huge David? shout out from NASA, so to celebrate, we're gonna rap on one of his beats. Now everyone must participate, and we're gonna go in solar system order. Hey, I can spit some? Yeah, just go after Nep and before Pluto. Say less. Saturn, <laughs> take it away. At first, I had to watch it carefully to realize it's the same guy. Everywhere. Everywhere. But he's dressed completely differently. With different hairstyles. Different hairstyles. Retrograde, I'll spin the block real quick. I mess up that new car he's and giving new good, side chick. On my queen like tip. Good planetary like science this. too. Yes. No gravity, cause I got G's on deck. Yo, it's V, you know I'm 900 degrees. 900 degrees around at the Venus. Meg tight knees. Got them boys shook, cause I am fertility. Anybody touch a And a little, little, little goddess. Me. Goddess of fertility. Earth population 7 billion. Climate change bars got my whole zone litty. It's a meltdown, we should really get busy. I got polar bears hot when they need to be chilly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? That's that really good one. Really line. good. Five Rovers, it's an MTV tour. Giving Earth rocks, he been feeling like the 80s. When Elon come through, tell him bring me all the ladies. Uh, Cause Mars. 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 Yo, it's Pluto and I'm purple like a nurple and I'm highly underrated. I'm the planetary Urkel and my orbit make me dizzy. I go up and down in circles and the sun is always coming for my neck. I'm like a turtle. He's abusive with the verbal under his skin like a dermal. Like, hey, I wasn't done. You were done. No, no, you were absolutely done. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I love it. <laughs> and I a couple of things. Pluto also orbits with its axis highly tilted. So, very tilted. so sometimes it's pointing towards the sun. And and so sometimes so the gestures here about the sun on, his, on neck. his neck. Yep. No, the science is amazing. No, no, no it's, it's authentic. You can't do that unless you know what you're doing. Right. That's good stuff. That's right. Microsoft's new quantum chip could be a huge deal, and there's a big debate about it. Here's why. The reason that we want quantum computers is that they could do new things, like simulate the natural world even better. But the reason that we don't have useful ones yet is they need to be bigger. The problem is when you make them bigger, they have more errors. And the reason for that is that the information inside, the qubits, are incredibly sensitive and they get disrupted very easily. Microsoft tried to build a new kind of qubit, a topological qubit, where instead of storing the information in one place, they spread it out like this, using a new state of matter called Majorana quasi particles. That's awesome because, in theory, you could get a bigger quantum computer with fewer errors because if you mess with the information in one place, you'd still have it in another. That's 
pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. So what I like about this is these are people not just explaining ordinary science right. that, that you get in a textbook. Right. They're they're reaching out for the frontier. Yes. Checking press releases and the latest discoveries. Yeah, because that is the cutting edge That's of cu computing right now. Right now. Often what, what we do on Star Talk, I, it's sort of basic science, the foundational science. Speak for yourself. Well, you do frontier science? No, you? I'm saying uh, it's a, it's advanced for me. Oh, right. <laughs> no, I, no, I mean basic, simple. I mean basic. It's, it's been in the textbooks for, right. in some cases, centuries. Uh -huh. So everyone here is high energy. And you kind of want that if you want to learn science. I think of how many people were just bored with their science class in Absolutely. school. Absolutely, yeah. And you just can't get bored if somebody's like coming at you with like, and this happened and that happened, and take a look at this. And they thought that was true, but it's not. It happened this way. Right. It's like, whoa. So I'm all in. I love it. If I hold it like this and I let it go, what will happen? It will... Drop. It will persist. <laughs> Why? Oh, she didn't spin it. Gravity. <laughs> Boring. <sighs> we start spinning it. Ready? I drop it! Ah! Whoa, what? And look at the kids, I love the it. Kids are it. <laughs> That's total magic! How's that happening? It's a gyroscope now. It is spinning and it is precessing like our planet Earth. So that's basic science that right there. That is basic science. That goes yeah. back. Yeah. We, we, this is like uh, ever since right. Euler and others centuries ago. But it's still fascinating to see physics like that at work. You could say it and it's not as interesting as if you, you just show, it. show it. There was a day where if you were to learn science, it was kind of force fed to you in a classroom in a textbook, you know, take your medicine by watching a documentary. To realize now that TikTok has a button on the homepage that gives you direct access to STEM content, that's a game changer. So for STEM videos, machine learning will flag videos as being STEM content from sciencey keywords in its captions and hashtags. And by cross-referencing with a list of verified science communicators, were known for making science content, like Star Talk. Then, Real Humans at Common Sense Networks reviews all the videos to make sure they're STEM and that the video actually teaches you something. The videos then undergo human review by experienced researchers at another company to make sure the information is reliable. And only after this two-week process do videos appear on the STEM feed. Hmm. Research takes time, people. You want to see a few more? All right. All right. How high up is space, actually? If you started running straight up at an... I did not know I could run to space. ...to reach the point where there's no longer enough air for you to breathe. And after 3,500 hours or almost 146 days of running, you'd reach the farthest satellites orbiting Earth. So there's a point where she mentioned where you'd pass the GPS satellites. Those are high up enough so that they sit in sufficiently different gravitational field. Nice. That general relativity affects its timekeeping. Their clocks tick slower okay. than our clocks on Earth's surface. When they communicate the time standards to the cell phone towers, right. they have to pre-correct it for Einstein's general theory of relativity. For the literal loss of time. Correct. So well above that, you get to the geosynchronous satellites. Right. They're in an even a different time frame than the GPS satellites. So this is a tight video. I yeah, love it. That's a good video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if we turned off all the lights on Earth for an entire day? Three billion people, including 80% of North Americans, would get to see an unobstructed view of the Milky Way for the first time in their lives. Wow. He's trying to take you to a new place to think about the world. It gets dark, you turn on the lights. All right. Who thinks in ways other than that? Right. right. Which is, hey, it's dark. Let's enjoy the night sky. Exactly. I didn't pay my electric bill anyway. <laughs> You don't have to have everybody shut off their lights. Just just leave you the city. Right. When I was a kid, I thought the Hayden Planetarium was a hoax. Grew up in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I saw the night sky. It has eight stars. And that was it. I, that and the sun and the moon. And I was perfectly happy with that. So you were in the Hayden Planetarium. And then I went to the Hayden Planetarium. And you saw the full night the sky. The full night sky. And I said, this is a hoax. It's, yeah. a, it's a delightful hoax. You need those occasional reminders. And sometimes I forget to give that kind of reminder. Yeah. So I'm glad there are people out there who are thinking that way. Very cool. So as I understand it, this feed is curated for the user because not everyone is interested in all science. Sometimes science is like jazz. You start off liking Kenny G and you end up liking Thelonious Monk. <laughs> I do like the curating part because like 
all the videos that you showed, they were like all space. Yeah, they were. Because 100% that's, of them. That's you. Yeah. Whereas me, I probably get a lot of climate stuff. In this modern age, it's all about the algorithm. The algorithm is feeding me more of what I like. And in a STEM feed, oh my gosh. Did you know about the algorithm? Well, I know that TikTok serves up content that you like through their special blend of moderation and curation, which is really just math. Machine learning algorithms and human experts provide a double layer of protection to ensure anything that violates community guidelines is filtered out. Then what's left is fit for the feed. Each user's For You feed is a set of just eight videos, constantly refreshing itself to ensure it stays personalized, diverse, and locally relevant. To tailor your For You feed, a mathematical algorithm looks at the content you've engaged in the past to find overlap between popular videos and videos it thinks you like. When users have seen too much of a particular type of content, they're in a filter bubble. TikTok avoids filter bubbles by using machine learning to analyze the similarity between videos and inserting variety. They will also prioritize showing you videos from your home country. I guess you do know about the algorithm. Mm, a little. All right, want to see some more? Why not? The six mysteries in physics that could win you a Nobel Prize. Mystery number one is dark matter. Until today, we don't know what the nature of dark matter is. You nail that, you got Weird. Nobel Prize. No, you call it Fred. Is, is <laughs> I call it, I do. Yes. The dark matter and dark, dark energy. Right. If he's a mention, he's gonna have to mention dark energy. Right. Let's see. Mystery number two is dark energy. There you go, you called it. There you go. Expanding at a rapid rate, and it keeps expanding. And when we think of the question, why is it expanding? Why is it running away? Because we're being chased by another universe. Something visible everywhere in the universe called dark energy. And we believe that it has some that sort of in the gravitational effects that instead of bringing things together, it throws things apart. I think it is. Debussy, Claire de Lune. <laughs> Mystery number three is quantum gravity. If you would be able to prove that quantum mechanics aligns perfectly well with gravity, you would be able to solve one of the most and longest standing problems in the history of physics. Quantum physics is so hard to, it just is. Right. And you try to say, well, let me understand it. Yeah. And there's a famous quote, the day you understand quantum physics is the day you realize you don't. <laughs> that may, and that What's makes that? perfect sense. Right. right. It's not something to understand, it's something you just grow accustomed to. Oh, well, look at that. Yeah. I like yeah. that. You say, okay, that, it's going to do that, and I'm used and to I'm it. And I'm going to accept it. You accept it. I'm going right. to accept I'm it. I'm going to accept it. Even though, this. intuitively, I don't want to accept it. Right. Let me pause and see if I can guess the other three. Okay. Okay, so how you go from organic molecules to self-replicating life. Oh. We don't know how that. No, nobody we, knows how that happens. We don't know how that happens. That's very cool. That's cool. And another one, a little out there, what was around before the Big Bang? Of course, so seeing back to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know, that one, that's yeah, a good one. Right. And we need a sixth one here. Mm, Hold on. What's inside of a dark hole, a black hole? Oh. Yeah, but you, you can just go and find out. <laughs> 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 oh, I know. Go ahead. Uh, what accounts for the matter antimatter asymmetry in the oh, universe. Oh, in the universe. This is, yes. oh my God, I lose sleep over that one. Th I gotta tell you, that is a good one. That's a good one. We should all be balanced we out, matter and antimatter. And we have matter overriding antimatter. That's right. And it shouldn't be that way. And it shouldn't be. Right. It should be a total cancellation. Correct. And we'd just be a universe of photons. That would be a light. Light. Uh, we would be heaven. <laughs> 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 but it's like the photon checked into the hotel right with no luggage yeah and the bellhop says do you have any luggage they said no i'm traveling light <laughs> stop no <laughs> let me get a joke every night na <laughs> don't don't to uh, uh, oh, traveling light <laughs> <laughs> all right let's all keep right, going let's see what he says mystery number four is the inflation of the universe where physicists believe that right after the big bang had happened by 10 to the power of negative 34 seconds so he's talking about right after the Big Bang, you said what's before the Big Bang. Yeah, the difference is we already have the theory of inflation. Right. That's not a new, not a new understanding thing. that has to come out. Right. So what's different now is inflation explains so much of what's going on out there, Right. but we don't have evidence of it having happened. 
we just declare that it happened and that explains so many things. But the, the idea of the inflation is already out there. Whereas we don't understand dark matter, dark energy. If there is inflation, we fully understand it. The only thing that would happen is you would confirm. Confirm, the, and that, that can be worth a Nobel Prize. Could be, But it's absolutely. a different nature of, of a the discovery other, the other. compared to the others. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mystery number five is observing the Hawking radiation, where the physicist Stephen Hawking theorized that a black hole acts exactly like a hot mm. pot on a hot stove, that it emits radiation, right. and it, by doing so, it loses energy. And, and evaporates, yeah. yeah. But the problem with that is that the math works. Stephen Hawking's math works. The theoretical understanding is completely in place. Quantum physics provides for it. It's all there. All right. And so if you wanted someone to be able to observe it, okay. Yeah. And, and observations get Nobel Prizes. Yeah. I don't want to diminish the role and value of observational science here. You're thinking more conceptual discovery as opposed to, hey, look at that. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is, if he doesn't give my list, we add my to his list. Yeah, yeah. And have him add to his video. Okay, yeah. let's keep going. Mystery number six is the neutrinoless double beta decay, where in particle physics, when you have a single beta decay in the atom, it's when a neutron decays into a proton, an electron, a neutrino. So this is good, because he's setting up what could be people's future research path. Exactly. He's like, there are kids right now who are just like, I'm, can, gonna, I'm gonna get that I'm million gonna get dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna get that million dollars. <laughs> it's still a good list. I like it. So of course, people comment uh -huh. on all the videos. Right. So we got a few here on, on what we just saw. Yeah. Th this is good, I like this one. Dark matter is matter, but darker. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat that. Okay, that's, that. That's just true. That is an explanation. That's just true. <laughs> I could solve all six if I think really hard. <laughs> and here it says here, bro, you got to speak faster. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> if you want that Nobel Prize, you better speed it up. What this tells me is that there are people out there who are natural teachers. They have some knowledge and they don't want to keep it to themselves. The extent to which science lands on social media platforms broadly is a game changer that does two things. It democratizes science and it's not good enough to democratize it. You also have to be interested in it. Hmm. And from the likes of the posts we've seen, uh, people are getting into it. I'm delighted to see how rich that landscape is of creativity, of people out there who are spending their time, energy, effort, just to teach the rest of us science. And they already cherry picked the cool stuff, right? You're only gonna see cool stuff. Right. And if that's enough to stimulate your curiosity and then get a textbook or take a class or, or watch a documentary, more power to it. But I'm all into fanning the flames or the, turning the embers that might have been lurking within you from long ago into a raging fire of curiosity. Science fire. Sounds <laughs> like an insurance hazard, but I'm all in. I'm just looking forward to a less stupid world. That's all. <laughs> okay. So Chuck, I think we're done here. It's a new beginning. Done and a new beginning yeah. at the same time. Yes, that's huh. what a commencement is. An academic commencement is the end of your school, but it's the beginning of the rest of your life. Sounds commencement. Very scary. <laughs> Very scary. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. All right, everyone, I need you to take your tassel from this <laughs> side, put it over here, and now out into the world you go. Four Star Talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, as always bidding you to keep looking up or keep scrolling up.